Okay, we're continuing with this book, The Holy Grail of Wisdom Quotes. We're going through it from A to Z. Right now we're on the letter B, starting with Yogi Berra. Okay, so the first quote by Yogi is, The future ain't what it used to be. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of things Yogi says, they're silly, but they're true. The future of a young person isn't the same as the same age person would have been 40 years ago. Okay, Yogi continues, It was deja vu all over again. It ain't over till it's over. In theory... Yeah, let me get myself out of the way here. Okay. In theory, there's no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is. I would give my right arm to be ambidextrous. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. You can observe a lot just by watching. Okay. Uh, the next speaker here is Arthur Bestor. He says, freedom to think means nothing less, nothing unless it means freedom to think differently. Yeah, for some reason, people get very offended by that. It's a sign of stupidity, but unfortunately, most people don't realize that, and they take away the speech of others. Okay, the Bible goes here. Was sent to the other paper. Oh, I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, <clears throat> that, what that means is I had a whole bunch of Bible quotes and I put them into a separate file. So I, I, I could maybe do that separately. Anyway, sorry about that. Okay, next speaker, Ambrose Pierce from the 1800s. Intolerance is natural and logical because in every dissenting opinion there is an assumption of superior wisdom. A bore is a person who talks when you wish him to listen. Okay. Albert Binet, this one's a little more interesting. So Albert Binet, you know, is the co-developer of the you know, Stanford Binet IQ test. And what he said was, with practice and training and method, we can increase our attention, our memory, our judgment, and become more intelligent. The intelligence of an individual is not a fixed quantity. When they made the IQ test, you know, check for people who were, uh, you know, incapable and competent. But people can dramatically improve their IQ tests. I've made previous videos about that. It's obviously true. If you just think about it, all these college professors are a bunch of stupid liars, okay? They're ignoramuses. They say, oh, you can't increase your IQ. BS, it's very easy to increase IQ. I've talked about that before. Okay. Um, next quote from Bismarck. He was a former leader of Germany. He said, when someone says they agree to the thing on principle, they mean that they haven't the slightest of intention of doing it in practice. What we learn from history is that no one learns from history. That's kind of sad, but people don't read history. They don't know it. And because they don't know it, the same stupid stuff just happens all over again. It's just same thing happens all over again, but with the newer modern technology. Never believe anything in politics until it has been officially denied. Okay, so that's Bismarck. All right, the next speaker is Carol Black, and she's a lady who works with uh, kids having problems. She made a film called Schooling the World. Okay, um, here she goes. The entire testing, grading, and sorting functions of schools was overtly intended by many to identify superior genetic stock and foster interbreeding among them, while discouraging reproduction amongst the mentally inferior. Poverty was seen as inevitable and grading and intelligence testing as a valid mechanism for determining which of our children would be abandoned to it, to poverty. Okay. But I, I actually don't fully agree with that statement. That's her point of view on it. I don't think schools are designed to separate the smart from the dumb. I think they're kind of designed to make everybody dumb, the public schooling system. And there's a whole story of how that comes from, Russia, from, from Prussia, from Germany. Okay, it was to, to create factory workers. And then you get into the whole John Taylor Gatto schooling thing. All right, so Carol Black continues. Poverty was seen, okay, here she continues. Increasingly, those who cannot adapt to the artificial environment of school are diagnosed as brain disordered and drugged. Well, that's true. Basically, if you know, a young boy, it ain't natural to sit there and have some stranger lady yapping at you for eight hours in a row and the kid's supposed to sit still for that. That's not normal. I've talked about it before. When I was a kid, I was put in solitary confinement because I said I was hyperactive just because I was bored. I'd do the homework in five minutes and want to goof around. Uh, I was alone by myself for two years because of that. Okay, um, Carol Black continues. Unfortunately, we live in a world where you have to be skeptical of almost all received information. 
The basic thing you've got to do with almost everything is to follow the money. Yeah, that's the, sort of the beginning. It's sort of like the Cicero quote, qui bono, who benefits? Okay, Carol Black continues. We have radically altered our own evolved species behavior by segregating children artificially into same age peer groups instead of mixed age communities and by compelling them to be indoors and sedentary for most of the day. Yeah, that's a good point. And Ayn Rand had talked about that in her book, Compra Chicos, that it's not natural for all kids the same age to be together. And when you put children all the same age in a classroom, you're not doing them a favor. You make them stupid. The reason they become stupid is because everybody's intellectually equal, so they can't teach each other anything. There's nothing to learn. It just becomes a question of, <clears throat> excuse me, playing social games. And because you're playing social games, the kids, all they care about is a popularity contest. And so they're not interested in learning. When a child's with parents or adults, then they learn. The adults teach them. They, they, they know more than the kid does. But um, you just get universal stupidity in everybody the same age classrooms. Okay. Um, and having the boys and the girls together is an even other big distraction. Okay. Uh, Carol Black continues, traits that would be valued in a larger American society like energy, creativity, independence, they will get you in trouble in the classroom. Okay, so that's uh, it for today. Hope that was helpful.